we can gather in a moment of silence as we enter into God's presence this morning on the first Sunday in Lent. And Pastor Eric will lead us in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving one of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. In our gathering song, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. Oops. Maybe our gathering song. Well. Let's read these words silently to ourselves and then we'll move on. The Lord be with you. 
Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 9. Today's reading is the conclusion to the flood story. Because of human sin, God destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine, yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment. As in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. From Genesis, God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there, shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the cloud, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O oh Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O oh Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. As God acted through Christ's suffering and death to bring us to God, so God acts through baptism to save us from a sinful existence. The spiritual cleansing marks our new life in Christ. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which 
also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey God, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is this prefigured now, saves you not as removed of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is my joy to be here worshiping with you today. As a deacon, and some of you have heard this, and I'll say it again, though, as a deacon, I serve as minister with the Lutheran Church of Framingham in Massachusetts. Our congregation is in partnership with St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, also in Framingham. And that means that we worship together and we do ministry together while still maintaining our own denominational identities. I also serve and worship and do ministry with and among people who have disabilities. Over the years, I have discovered how much I love worshiping in new places and in new ways with other people of faith. It's a reminder to me that when we gather together in worship by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are united in the body of Christ. That is, we united into the Holy Catholic Church. We worship together. We are no longer alone. I also love Maine. It's my second favorite state. My spouse and I look forward to camping in Maine several times a year. It's where we go to find rest and relaxation and peace. Now I've visited many parts of Maine, but I've never made it as far north as Bangor. However, here I am today among you worshiping in Bangor. And as I said, it's a joy to be here. Two weeks ago, neither you nor I could have known 
that we would be worshiping together today. Then things happened and life changed. A year ago, you as a congregation could not have known that you were about to enter a time of pastoral illness and transition. Then things happened and life changed. Similarly, just over a year ago, we as a country and as a world could not have known that we were heading into this long period of pandemic that would result in so much suffering and death. And now here we are at the beginning of another season of Lent, grieving the deaths and the losses, still keeping our distance from each other, and yet worshiping together across the miles through the wonder of technology. Who knew this could happen? Things happen and life changes. That is the reality of living in this world. Yet as followers of Jesus, we know there is another reality of life, the reality of life created by God's word, spoken and proclaimed in and among and through us, through scripture and prayers and song and water and bread and wine. That's why we gather and worship every Sunday to hear the word that God has spoken for us on this day and for this time and to find sustenance in that word as we go out into the world. Now here's a fun fact about the first Sunday in Lent. Here's something that does not change. The gospel reading for this Sunday is always the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Each year we hear the story told from a different gospel, of course, and so we get a slightly different point of view of the story from year to year. Today we hear Mark's version. Typical of Mark's writing, his description of the temptation is short, only two verses. Mark says, and the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Mark does not give us much detail as to what happened to Jesus in the wilderness. He doesn't tell us how Satan tempted him or how Jesus responded to the temptation. Mark lets us know, though, that the, ten, the temptation happened immediately after Jesus was baptized. That is, immediately after Jesus is coming up out of the water and the Spirit descends on him and he is claimed as Christ's beloved Son. The temptation is a moment in time. And then Jesus who has been strengthened by the Holy Spirit through his baptism, is moving on to the next event, going out into the world to proclaim the good news that God's kingdom has come near. You may notice as we work our way through the Gospel of Mark this year, that everything in this Gospel seems to happen immediately. There's a sense of urgency to the way Mark tells the story, an urgency to the message that he wants to share with us. So we may wonder, what's the urgent message for us to hear today? I think it is this. Things happen and life changes quickly. Sometimes, without much warning, we find ourselves out in the wilderness some strange and unfamiliar fate, place filled with beasts and unknown temptations. It's a liminal space, a space between here and there, a transitional space, a space between the familiar and the unfamiliar. It's a space that can bring us to something new and creative and life-giving when we're willing to trust the promises that God makes to us, 
the promises that assure us that God is with us even during the most troubling days. Signs of God's promises are all around us. The rainbow in the sky is a sign of the covenant, the promise that God establishes with Noah and all people, and in fact, with all the earth and all creation. The promise that God will care for us and protect us no matter what happens. The cross on our forehead, first placed there when we are baptized and placed there again with the ashes of Ash Wednesday, is a sign that we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. We belong to God forever. Our relationship with God, the one who creates us and saves us and fills us with the Holy Spirit is forever. It is the firm foundation on which we build our lives and from which we can go out into the world to share in word and deed the good news of Jesus Christ. This is the good news for today that through the waters of baptism, we are claimed as God's beloved people. Through the waters of baptism, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to renounce the devil and the evil forces and the ways of sins and all the temptations that draw us away from God. Through the waters of baptism, we are united together into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Through the waters of baptism, we rise up each day as a new creation, set free to go out and love God and serve our neighbors. God promises to be with us in the good times and the bad times, in the joys and in the sorrows, in the ordinariness of life, and in the wilderness. For in life and in death and in life again, we are never alone. That is God's sure and certain promise for us this day. This day. To God be the glory. Amen. Before we start the prayers this morning, uh, does anyone have uh, anybody else to include uh, in the prayers? Wally, could you add Colleen? Sure. Wally, could you add Mark? is a very serious case of COVID. Wally, could you add my sister, Chris, who's had a stroke? Anyone else? Uh, I also want to add all the people in the, in the Southwest who are suffering from the flood damage or the, the cold the cold weather and water problems. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of, bi of biologists, conservationists, and science educators educators hear us O oh god 
your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast, love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially Marty, Margaret, Rowan, Edward, Sonia, John Paul, Pastor Eric, Jerry, Lois, Colleen, Mark who has COVID, and Chris who just suffered, suffered a stroke. Please also watch over all the people, Lord, in the Southwest who are suffering because of the recent winter storms. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries and care of care and concern. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Mighty and merciful God, lover of justice and equity, you call us to use our gifts to support the weak, to help those who suffer, and to honor all your people. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us advocates for your justice and instruments of your peace so that, so that all may be reconciled in your beloved community, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, our living water, our faithful companion, our true guide, by your word, you created a world with rivers and seas, wells and springs. And in mercy, you provided water for your people in the wilderness. For your word with the water of baptism, we thank you, O God. We praise you for Christ who joined us in our desert, calling us to righteousness, granting forgiveness, and walking with us into newness of life. For Jesus, your gracious word, we glorify you, O God. Through these days of Lent, we plead for your spirit, that strengthened by your word, we may care for others and for the world you made, and to work for justice and peace for all. For your word in our hearts and minds, we praise you, O God. Receive our thanksgiving and grant us your blessing, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast 
from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. And our sending him, I want Jesus to walk with me.